Alright, what's going on everybody? Welcome to another Python 3 Basics tutorial video. In this video, what we're going to be talking about is Python lists versus tuples. So they can be kind of confusing at times, and you might consider a tuple a list, and you might not understand why you're unable to do things with it. So the grand if both of them are lists, right? In, you know, by the definition of a list, you know, in, in the world. Both of them are lists, but a tuple is immutable and a list is mutable. And what that means is a tuple, we can't change it. Okay, so once you define that tuple, you can't be modifying that tuple. A Python list, on the other hand, we can modify. We can add values, remove values, change values, um, sort the you know order and all kinds of stuff. So um, that's the difference. How do we define them? Well, the definition of a tuple is basically anything where let's, we can say x equals 5, 6, 2, and 6. Okay, that's a tuple because we don't have anything around it, so it's a tuple. The other way that you can define a tuple would be x equals, and then using these uh, round brackets, 5, 6, 2, 6. These are both tuples, okay? Now then you've got a Python list, so we can say phi, or y equals, and then we can say 5, 6, 2, 6. That's a Python list. And the only reason, or the only way that we know that's a list is with the square brackets, and Python just recognizes this as the case. So What's the point of this? So, so a lot of times, like in my programming, I rarely use tuples for anything other than sequence unpacking, which we'll show in a moment. Um, and, and that's really it. So, um, but there might be other times where you wanna maybe pass some information through. Also, if you have a list, not a Python list, but let's say a list of data that you know you don't wanna change or you wanna make sure it doesn't change, then you, was, you would use a tuple because a tuple is gonna generate faster and it's gonna be iterated through faster than a Python list. That's about it. So anyway, a popular example of when people use tuples would be something like this. So say you have um, an example function, and this example function after a bunch of code, blah, 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 it returns a 15 and a six. So it returns two values. What you wanna do sometimes is you wanna say x, y equals example func. And what that's going to do is it's going to assign the returned values of this example function to x and to y. And it's very important that it stays in that order, okay? So this is why um, a tuple is important in some scenarios. Now, this isn't the only scenario that someone would use a tuple. Again, if you wanted to iterate through a huge list, in quotes, like not a Python list, but a huge uh, group. Uh, even group's not a good word. It's very hard to find a word that isn't like something that's defined in Python. But anyway, uh, a huge assortment of data. Uh, you're gonna wanna use a tuple if you don't want it to change or you don't need it to change ever and so on. But if you want it to change and be mutable, you're gonna wanna use a list. So um, that's about it, uh, at least with a tuple. Um, for example, let's say, let's just delete all of this here and we'll leave this okay with a tuple like say you want to reference data within this uh group of uh, group, assortment of data i'm having such a hard time picking a phrase so we can do x um one like this and what this means so you've got the print x as in x here and then we've got square brackets and then one what this is saying is we want to know the the one I guess is the better way to say it, the oneth element, because basically when you have a list or a tuple or whatever, a group of data, the values when they are exploded, let's say into all of their little indexes, so each one of these numbers here has its own index. And the indexes start at a value of zero, not one, zero. So this is the zeroth element, this is the firsteth element, second, element and the third element okay so they start at zero it's kind of hard to get used to at first but you'll get used to it so now with that tuple we can still kind of, we can still um, ask questions against the tuple so the firsteth element was a six sure enough no problem we can also do basically the exact same thing so we'll just copy paste we'll say why the first actually let's say the second element so we should get a two or six and then a two sure enough um, so that's how we can reference data. The other thing that we could do, obviously, uh, would be, you know, you can print, you know, one, and then instead of y, just y2, we can say y2 and y3 that we want to print out, like that. And that's really it. So um, those are just, uh, this is a very basic notion of accessing data that's within a tuple or a list. 
Um, the next video is going to be much more in depth as far as list manipulation, accessing, and all this searching and all this fun stuff. Like I said, generally, you're going to use a tuple. I guess I can't really speak for everybody. At least for myself, I rarely use tuples except for sequence unpacking. That's really about it. Um, Otherwise, I just use a list. Now, if you're looking for efficiency or you have a huge list, it might make sense to use a tuple, but again, if you use like a generator, uh, which we'll probably cover later on, uh, it, the difference I don't really think is that big. So anyway, you'll probably find yourself using lists more. They're much more uh, programming friendly, and, and oftentimes you are gonna wanna uh, modify a list. So anyway, enough on that. We will cover that in the next video. If you guys have any questions or comments about this video, feel free to leave them below. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for all the support and subscriptions, and until next time.